Hey guys, welcome to the video. I'm Dean and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com and today we're going to be taking you beyond the Photoshop basics. So we've got another art collab today. We have a piece here by the heavy metal artist Stephen Lindsay. I connected with him on the heavy metal groups and also on the official photo manipulation group. Now, as you may know, we're in the process of building the actual website that this YouTube channel is based on, photomanipulation.com and we're putting together loads of sales graphics for the different bundles. So we've got bundles for overlays, tentacles, um, and this one is uh, a promo artwork for the cables bundle. So as before with our other React videos, we're gonna be checking out the artwork, observing the techniques, and seeing how he does things. So with that out of the way, let's get into this. Right, so, you can see the kind of basic composition sketch. Now I said I wanted an artwork in a kind of diagonal composition. I, I always find diagonal composition really pleasing on the eye. I said a figure would be good. And the only kind of brief that was given was to use the cable elements in the artwork. So that's what you're seeing in action there. And if you want to use these cable elements shown on this one today, Look in the link in the description below and you can score this for yourself. So we've got the figure there. I'll be keeping a close eye on the layer stack to see the type of adjustments used and the brush settings at the top left. So that tube element there was a CG element part of our bundle. And I can see he's incorporating other stock elements from other places. Now that's kind of weird. What's that? Noodles or worms? okay and on the adjustments we've got a lot of brightness and contrast we've got gradient maps and black and white filters now those tubes there are actually uh, kind of ribbed tubes that we hung up in the studio so they're photo stocks so in this bundle it's not just cg elements it's photo stock elements as well and now i can see a bit more in depth those noodle looking uh, background tubes look really good together i like the way that he repeated those elements and we've got the cg tubes there so a bit of transforming going on okay so i'm assuming this is the kind of robotic manipulation going on here elements moved tweaked and amended and then the tubes will be going on in there now if you look at the layer stack to the right he's actually using a clipping mask to keep all of that pixel data within that black area on the torso. Me personally, I think I would have used a layer group with a mask on it, with all of those elements in. But the good thing about Photoshop, have you seen on this channel loads of times, there's 10,000 ways to skin the proverbial cat. There's no right or wrong. There's just what works for the particular individual. And you saw there was a quick flash there of the kind of initial sketch. And like I do with my mood boards, Stephen is hiding and showing that kind of reference sketch to see if he's on the right track and things are progressing as he'd like them to. So there's a bit of dynamic compositing there where it spills out from the, um, the torso hole and into the rest of the scene. Very interesting, very cool. This is the kind of artwork I loved doing when I was younger. I was, I was mad on the kind of HR Geiger inspired complex wires and tubes. Very cool look. We've got more of the CG tubes coming in. Lots of clipping mask action. And I wanna see how he does his shadows. I've seen a lot of brightness and contrast going on there, but I wonder if he uses exposure or manually painted uh, brush, brush strokes or anything like that. Warp tool and then some hand-drawn by the looks of things that was hand-drawn elements i don't think that is that stocks being transformed or whether that was no i i think they were um the tubes from our bundle yep where there were so many of them i, I thought they were hand-drawn and here you can see the body being entwined and engulfed with all of these sci-fi elements Ah, yeah, so that's that's the leg being removed with a cybernetic kind of stump. And then, ah, okay, that's clever. The thing about doing these reacts and watching and doing commentary is that you pick up on 
so many more details because you're concentrating to observe what's going on and then relaying it for the video. It's quite an interesting dynamic. Foregrounds, I wonder if he'll use any um, depth of field techniques so the, the elements closer to us would be slightly blurry and then where the focal point is everything will be sharp and in focus i'm not too sure how we'll approach this i should have taken a moment to really look at the artwork before doing the react we've got some manual kind of vignetting going on down in the bottom right uh i can see overlay being used it's a very monochromatic palette so what that means is that he's largely working in black and white and if you watch red's videos he always talks about values and switching on a black and white layer to see where the lights and the darks and the mid-tones lie and whether it's correct and then i'm assuming what stephen will do will go ahead and do the color processing but i'm not too sure this is the first time i've ever watched his process so we've got some blend modes going on here i'm noticing hard light and what else we got going on Clipping masks for everything. I'm surprised not to see any um, layer groups and uh, combined with layer masks. That is my go-to. The reason why I prefer a layer group and a layer mask, and it's not right or wrong in any way, is because within the layer group, you've got a lot more freedom to move elements up and down, put in adjustment layers between those elements. So it's starting to get really complex now. The character's totally engulfed. You'll notice how the background is faded and not as sharp or as not as dark as the foreground elements. And this gives the eye the opportunity to lock on to what's most important. The most important aspect of this composite is the primary figure, the Android creation. Um, that original sketch that just flashed up on screen, that, that was the original sketch that I gave him. And he really, really went to town with that, uh, that very basic and simple idea. I think he's doing the shadows with um, manually painted uh, soft edge brush hard light layers, which is interesting. We've got some overlay action going on there. Overlay very versatile for many different purposes. There's With this type of complex artwork, there's always the issue of how far is too far and how complex and how crazy do you make it before you start losing the power of the composition and the focal element. And this was an issue that I faced frequently because this was the type of artwork that I made my name on, uh, hyper intricate, biomechanic, Geiger inspired artworks. So it's been really great watching Steven's workflow because this is a video on this channel that is very much aligned with my artistic tastes and what I like to do. And I love seeing those little red sketches coming up. I use mood boards or sometimes preliminary sketches as well. And I hide and show those layers just to make sure I'm on track now there's a lot of um, CG assets popping up on screen they're actually from Neo stock as well in case you wanted to snag them link in the description okay that was different I wonder what he did those vertical lines for what what purpose that served literally everyone on planet Earth works faster than me this piece is definitely starting to look pretty wild there was a really good kind of um, biomech artist on Deviant Art way back in the day called Slipknotty. I wonder where Slipknotty is these days. Give us a shout out in the comments if you used to be on Deviant Art during its uh, heyday in the early noughties. It was a great platform back in the day. I really enjoyed it. It's just a shame that they didn't invest at all properly into community management. They just tried getting volunteers to run the entire thing, and because of that, the entire website got flooded with really awful, um, I can't say awful art, but really depraved art that ruins the experience for everyone on the platform, which is unfortunate because there, at a certain time and place, Deviant Art really was the place to be. It was an amazing website. It's a shame it died the way it did. Really unfortunate. I kind of built my name up there. My first big commissions came through Deviant Art. We've got some atmospheric effects coming on now, some kind of foggy uh, smoke stuff. It looks like a brush being used. Pretty handy. I like that stock element. I don't think it's one of ours. Explosions. See that diagonal composition line that he keeps referring back to. Whenever you're in doubt, diagonal composition works really well. So you can see the, the line goes from the bottom left corner to the top right corner. It's a very, very 
pleasing shape. One of my most successful artworks of all time actually had that diagonal composition. I should share some of my old works from back in the day. Have you guys spotted a layer group yet? I've not seen one. Lots of gradient map action. I'm a big fan of gradient maps. Especially the black and white gradient map. I, I think that produces the best black and white of all the functions in Photoshop. Just a standard black and white gradient, like the, the built-in preset, gives a really pleasing finish with the tones. You can see he just um, shows the, the, the folder containing the typography. Because this was created, I paid this artist for the purpose of creating a sales graphic. And I said, you have to keep in mind, at that bottom kind of one-fifth section of the composite, there will be typography. So like a good designer, he's ensuring that he meets the brief by not including mission critical or essential features of the artwork in that bottom sec section of the uh, composite. There's a difference between being a good artist and a good freelancer. When you're a good freelancer, you understand that the hero of the story is the client and it's not you. And that's a really important, powerful lesson to learn. And once you overcome that mental hurdle, you have the potential to have a great freelance career. I've actually written about that in, at length in my book, Earn With Your Art. If you haven't already, check that out, link in the description. If you want to make a career doing artwork just like Stephen does like this, then I've written a, a complete how-to guide. It costs the same as a cup of coffee, why wouldn't you, you know? Now, he's he's maintains the monochromatic palette. Ah, there you go, iris blur, big favourite. So that is how he blurred the, the foreground and maintained the sharpness of the central focal point. That's cool. Well, I have to say, Stephen, you've done a great job on this, man. I'm really happy with the artwork. I think it portrays our cable bundle brilliantly. And yeah, good work. Hey, if you enjoyed this React video to somebody else's Photoshop workflow, check out the next video coming up right about now. And you can watch another one. That really supports the channel. Thanks for tuning in. That'll do it, guys. Catch you in the next one. See you then.